My name is Justus Uche Ijama. I'm a human rights defender. I'm a lawyer. I'm from Nigeria. I live and work in Anambra State, uh, Southeast Nigeria. A particular case we handled not quite long ago that involved five women who were actually friends and they went out, you know, for whatever uh, meeting they went at, at the end of the day on their return home. They were having usual, you know, uh, friendly banters, which, you know, uh, degenerated eventually to uh, a quarrels amongst, you know, uh, friendly women. So, as they were, you know, having ex exchange of words amongst them, the police a van accosted them and had all of them into their vehicle and got them arrested and took them to the police station. When they got to the police station, they were detained from the afternoon uh, period when they were arrested till about 10 p.m. in the night. The police officers that got them arrested insisted that these women were going to pay, you know, a certain amount of money before they could uh, regain their freedom. The women pleaded and pleaded and pleaded. The police was not ready to budge on their demand, demand but rather they eventually reduced the money to 15,000 Naira each for uh, the five of them. So the women now rallied around and managed to pay the money that night. Even when they did not have the money available in cash, one of the policemen had to escort one of them to uh, an ATM machine where she withdrew, you know, the whole money she had in her, you know, account to be able to augment the cash they had with them to, uh, to secure their freedom. They were, when they were released later that night, at the, after about 10 p.m., so they went home and the police asked them to come back, you know, in, first, in four days that time for you know a further investigation you know i wonder what was the the investigation was about so because of the way the women were handled they became afraid that going back there in four days time that they might be you know further harassed or intimidated you know they didn't know what the the day held for them so they sought for help i was when they were directed to us. When they came and told their story, we, we weren't really happy with such uh, uh, unlawful uh, violation of these women. So we assigned one of our colleagues, a uh, comrade B. Fedora, uh, to accompany them on the next appointed day. So when they got there, the DPU, that is the head of the police station, you know, asked uh, our colleague out of his office that he was not supposed to be there as he interviewed the women. So our colleague left and then the police uh, head started threatening the women, you know, trying to reprimand them that they had the temerity to involve human rights defenders you know, in a case he's handling, and because of that, that he, w he was going to revoke their bail, and he did actually uh, revoke their bail, and sent them back to detention. So when my colleague now got back to me, and informed me of what, you know, had happened, I really did not, you know, uh, take, it, take kindly to it, so I put a, co a call across to the officer but in his usual you know gloating manner he told me that he could not discuss his official matters on phone that if I had anything to tell him about the matter that I should come down to the station and I had to rally around and finish what I was doing in another city in Oka the uh, uh, capital city of Anambra and then rushed down to the station in company of my colleague whom he had 
just out of the station. When we got to his office, we started, we got talking, and I told him, and look, even though the, the police may have the right in certain situations to revoke bail, grant, earlier granted, but there are certain, there are certain, you know, uh, situations that could justify such revocation of bail. And from the facts available here, that there is nothing these women have done that would warrant the revocation of bail earlier granted. And moreover, that we were informed that these women had to pay a whopping sum of 75,000 Naira collectively to be able to secure their freedom. So the, the officer, you know, uh, fled up and started querying me what gave me the temerity to come to his office to query what, you know, the way he, he, he does his work, all of that. And he asked his boys to push us out of the station and like angry and hungry lions, you know, his boys descended on us, dragging and kicking and pushing us beating us to push us out of the station then the dpo now rushed out of his office and asked them to take us to the cell and detain us that they shouldn't even allow us to go and that was how we got you know you know, pushed into the cell in the course of the beating and they even broke my head got my dress up you know uh also uh, uh, smashed my ipad and pushed us into the cell, myself and my colleague, including the uh, women that had been detained, re-detained earlier on. So that was how we got into the cell. Luckily for me, I had my phone in my pocket and I had to make a call to other, make calls to other colleagues and other human rights, you know, groups like Amnesty International, you know, and, and then the, the organizations I contacted now started, you know, mounting pressure to the police authorities and all of that. And the following day, we were released. So the police authorities now, you know, due to the pressures that, you know, we are being mounted on them, had to be forced to set up uh, an invest the machinery in motion to be able to investigate the whole situation. And at the end of the investigation, they had to offer apology, including the officers that actually violated us. And the police pleaded with us that they were going to uh, reimburse every expenses we incurred. Even the, the, the money, the extorted from the women the 75,000 naira they had to refund the money back to the you know return the money to the women uh, so you could see from the whole scenario how people are you know violated on daily basis how people are unjustly arrested unlawfully detained how people are tortured like it was meted out to me how you know you could see you could see the chain of human rights violation and even the threat that we face almost on daily basis in the course of discharging our works.